As he sat there and watched the carnage, his uh, captain, Hubert Doggart, said to him rather absentmindedly, Where were you born, Eric? Reading, said Eric. And where was Alec born, said Hubert. <laughs> <laughs> Reading, said Eric. My mother didn't have a bike in those days. <laughs> it was a very uh, Bedsa reply. When we were doing the WWF new building and replacing the bridge, there was a whole discussion about what we should call the bridge. And the view was, as Sir Alec had died relatively recently, uh, was we ought to do something to recognise their significant contribution to sport as they were eminent borough residents. I can remember Alec on many occasions telling me about uh, swimming in the canal in his youth and the canal was very much part of his young life. So being close to the canal, close to the town where they, they really belonged, it's, it's a great location. Well, initially with the architects, uh, there was some concern that they, uh, they didn't need sculptures on the bridge and it would upset the balance of the bridge and the architecture of the bridge. So I was very, very aware at that time. Well, clearly, uh, we couldn't put them right in the middle of the, the bridge. It would be too much. It was, obviously, people need free access across the bridge. So we need to mark it out somehow in some way that would, would, um, we, we could see the reference to them quite easily. So I made a model in the studio, a full one to eight scale model of the bridge so I could see how we could position the figures so they would be seen above the railing height and have a relationship to each other. And so whilst this is not the size of a cricket pitch, I can't remember exactly what it is, um, there is a, there's a dynamic between the two figures that you see. He's bowled the ball, Eric has hit it, and the ball is now on that building over there. So once we'd made some proposals, we looked at the bases, I sent some images off, they looked at my maquettes and my designs of the bridge, they were pleased to go ahead and suggested we'll, we'll lay the concrete pads for you so that you can then just bring in the bronze plinths on top of that. They were hugely supportive of the foundation of a museum in Woking. Alec toward the Woking end was important so that it would be viewed from the light box and then Eric on the Horsell side. I started modelling in June, June 2013, so it took a year to do the clay work and then after the clay work is finished it takes another year or so just to just do the, the moulds, foundry. The foundry work is a very, very long process. It's my pleasure to welcome you all here today. Sir John, I'm most grateful that you agreed to join us today to unveil the statues by Alan Sly of Sir Alec and Eric Bedsit. Alec and Eric were always part of my life. And I say that because as a small boy throughout the 1950s, I sat on my wooden bench at the Oval with my packet of sandwiches and my bottle of Tizer <laughs> and watched that great Surrey team of the 1950s beat everyone who came to the Oval. They were old fashioned, kindly, could be grumpy and unyielding, but they were eternal friends to many of the people gathered here today and many others around the world. When I was at Downing Street, they noticed occasionally I had a spot of bother. And they were very kind, many of you may know, they grew vegetables. And every year, usually coinciding with difficulties, they would bring some of their vegetables along to number 10 I often wondered whether the fact that they were mainly Brussels sprouts had anything <laughs> to do with the difficulties, but I was never entirely sure about that. And now, uh, 
now that Alec is uh, fully on display, I think we might look at Eric, who has apparently hit the ball so far, you can see it just above the Borough Council entrance over there. So it clearly was a remarkable shot, and I've no doubt Eric would have reminded Alec of it many times. It's my pleasure now to unveil Eric Benson. A dearly departed colleague, Keith Smith, uh, and Mickey Stewart were both inspirational in helping shape what they looked like. The sculptor, Alan Sly, who was uh, dedicated beyond imagination to getting the image of them right. And Mickey Stewart kindly supplied a whole series of pictures and memorabilia and stuff as to how cricket was played then. So it was a, a real team effort. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, Mickey, oh, yeah. Mickey has been very helpful. Up. I mean, yeah. unbelievably helpful. When I first started doing maquettes of these two sculptures, um, the, the, the batting pose of Eric uh, was very dynamic and very strong. But in reality, it wasn't, it wasn't correct. So when Mickey Stewart came to the studio, he said, well, actually, Alan, Eric never played like that. He played with a much more solid, strong stroke, but very solid figure. It was less dynamic as I first had the mechanics. It's one of those things that Eric never played that shot in his life, so those that, that know him say, comment on that. So I, I said, I think we'll work on a shot down the ground rather than over mid wicket. There are several photographs of Alec in the bowling stance. He was well known for this medium fast bowling action, and he just moves forwards with such a pace through the, the wicket. Um, but what it meant was that I needed to have him right on the tiptoe right on the toe of his boot and away. Now that was important to make sure we never lost that movement all the way through. So building the armature and putting the clay on it was important to pick that line up and, and the concern was well how would it be strong enough? Would it be strong enough to hold that figure tumbling forward? You'll notice his foot's very close to the, the, the wicket and that's to provide greater stability. It's low tested effectively so there's a very big stainless steel pin that goes through his foot into that bronze base bolted down to that base and then the back of his foot, even though technically he's, as I was told, he would never be that close to the wicket, it's there to provide that stability. He did bowl very close to the wicket, it enabled him to swing the ball more. So uh, I think that's extremely accurate and I think if more bowlers were able to get as close to the wicket it would be an extremely good thing. And I don't ever remember in all the years I had the privilege of watching him that he actually hit the stumps, not once. I'm very happy with the action of the figures. I think there's some strengths I wasn't able to see in the studio because of the distance, but I've worked very well now I see them on site. Think about the way the, the eyes work. Alec is, is bowling straight toward the wicket, looking intently down, which is absolutely straight toward that wicket at the far end. But Eric, his eyes on the ball, and his direction is that way. The twist of that bat was critical. Uh, the twist of the bat, how far around the figure would be, was all important to Mickey. And it's been absolutely incredible, bearing in mind that you know, he, he knew nothing about the game whatsoever. And not only that, um, the, the, the slight difference in their facial appearance, which he took from the pictures as well, Again, he got absolutely right. I think they're magnificent. And it's the small touches. Notice no thigh pads, no padding, the old-fashioned shoes. It is absolutely true to what was the position when Alec and Eric were playing for Surrey. And it is, I think it's a remarkable piece of work. One I think that people locally will hugely enjoy for a very, very long time. I think the sculptures are fantastic. The detail is incredible and uh, it just, it's got so much movement in both of them. Something very stiff, standing straight, would not have been them. They, they were incredibly active men. They just exuded energy and, and life. It was a great pleasure for me to visit work in progress at the Sculptor Studio on three occasions. And I thought it was fascinating seeing from a very early stage to nearly the completed figure. Uh, was quite uh, special. I've never been involved in that sort of thing. I'm sure that you and your fellow trustees of the Bedster Foundation will ensure the Bedster Scholarship will help young people of today enjoy and develop their cricket skills. And I'm sure that as they walk across our Bedster Bridge, they will be inspired. And Alec and Eric would be pleased and very proud of these statues. And even more proud 
about the affection for them that has brought these statues into being. Alec and Eric made history. And thanks to what we are unveiling this morning, Woking has recorded it. And in this generation and the future, all Woking will benefit. I think places are about its culture, its art, uh, its architecture, rather than its money. We are keen to see different pieces of public art. You'll have seen different bits popping up over and around the borough. We will continue that trend. There should be something as you walk around the town, delight moments, and hopefully these will be delight moments. I think the hardest part of the project is really negotiating the design, really making sense of that and of course it's the only bit that you know at the end of the project and I hope actually that the Woking residents will be pleased with what we see. <coughs>